So we've been looking at the geometry of complex numbers when we started to realize that you could take every complex number and represent it as a point on the complex plane, we started to realize that you could form shapes out of these complex numbers, especially when they interact with each other. And this is really helpful for us. Human beings are visual creatures and because mathematics is a lot about perceiving patterns, if you can see those patterns in a very literal way, then it helps you identify and understand what's going on. So we're going to have a look at this series of questions and see what kinds of geometric insights we can gain about the arithmetic of complex numbers. So let's, let's dive in. They give us a pair of complex numbers, z uh, here, which is 3 plus i, and w, which is 1 plus 2i. So the first thing I want us to do is to plot the points representing uh, these complex numbers onto some argan diagrams. And I've got a couple of the particular questions, uh, sub-questions from this one picked out for us to do. So for starters, um, we need to get Z and W themselves. You can see these are the two things being requested onto our Argan diagram. And uh, it's really important that we always mention we are not talking about an X and a Y axis as two real numbers. We're talking about a real number, which we represent as, um, as our X coordinate, if you like, and then an imaginary number, which we represent as our, our Y or our vertical coordinate. So therefore, we can uh, think of, we can conceptualize a number like 3 plus i, where does it live? It lives at 3 comma 1. That's the real and the imaginary components. Uh, and then conversely, a thing like a w would live at 1 comma 2. So let's go ahead and plot both of those on there. Um, I'm using a grid here, but obviously if you just have uh, lined paper, it is really helpful if you get a set of consistent scales. So uh, I'm going to have my W, sorry, my Z rather, over here. I'm going to label that accordingly. Z equals 3 plus I. And then I'm going to grab my W at 1 plus 2I. So there are the points that are represented. Now in this particular part of this question, it asks us to focus on the conjugates. So Z bar and W bar, which you can see here and here. Now before I reach for the actual point where they belong, I wanna make sure I understand what is the conjugate, right? Well, for Z being three plus I, its conjugate will be the same real part, but the opposite imaginary part, 3 minus i. So where is that going to live? Well, it's going to share the same horizontal coordinate. So you can see it's going to be in line with wherever we um, plotted z. But it's going to be, well, minus i, where is that? It's going to be down here. This is z bar, okay? So that's that point. We'll come back to its geometric significance in a second. Let's put w bar on as well. So being that w is 1 plus 2i, w bar is 1 minus 2i, so I'm going to put or place w bar down here. So hopefully you can see here, when the question then says, describe any geometry you observe, there's a relationship between z and z bar um, that is uh, the same as between w and w bar. Every time you take the conjugate, the same thing is going on. Because you have that same uh, x coordinate, the same horizontal coordinate, that's why we notice that z and z bar W, W bar are vertically in line with each other. So you can see that sort of connection in here for Z and then in here, oopsie daisy, wrong one, in here for W. So it's good that we can see that connection, but more than that, there is also this connection of distance, right? If you think about where the real axis is, we're actually getting a reflection, a mirroring down, uh, in this case from the positive side above the real axis down beneath. Obviously, uh, you can see that there's this distance here, which is one, uh, and this distance is matching it with one, but it's in the opposite direction. Same deal over here, this distance is two and uh, so is this one. So I guess the way we would articulate this is, if we're trying to describe the geometry we're observing, the conjugate is a reflection of that original complex number across the real axis. So you end up getting this vertical effect here. Now this idea of reflection is actually not new, perhaps you just haven't thought about it that much. When we think about regular conjugates, you know, we thought about conjugates before we thought about uh, complex numbers, if I said to you, oh, I've got a number like, say, well, how about a 3 plus root 2 and 3 minus root 2. So these two numbers we would have called conjugates. There is the same reflection idea on the real number line. It's just slightly different. If we just uh, plot a real number line, I'm just going to grab this one. Just pinch it, put it over here. 
uh, let's make it a different color just so we can distinguish it. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if we imagine this as just our real number line on its own, and if I place, you know, let's, let's put zero somewhere over here, uh, and that would place, if I count along, uh, one, two, and then three, so we'll place three there, you're actually going to get both of these conjugates on either side of three. Uh, root two is about 1.4. So if I were to place three plus root two, I imagine it would be on the scale I've used somewhere around there. That'd be three plus root two. And then three minus root two is gonna be on the other side. Uh, I guess three take away 1.4-ish is about 1.6. So that's why you're gonna be picturing it somewhere around there. Three minus root 2. So you can see there is this same idea of reflection, it's just in a different fashion. Um, you've got this kind of, you know, vertical axis in here, if you like, around uh, x equals 3, and then you go to one side to get one conjugate, and you go to the other side to get the other conjugate. So reflection is kind of at the core of what the conjugate means, but because we're on the complex plane, over here you can see it's not a real reflection, it's, it's a reflection in the imaginary direction across the real axis. Okay, great. So we've got Z, W, and their conjugates there. Um, I wanna see what happens when we start to put some operations on this, some arithmetic as well. So the next set of questions or, or subparts underneath this that I want us to highlight, uh, when you add these numbers and then when you do some of the subtraction operations. So I already have Z and W in place. Let's see what happens when we do the addition. Now we've begun to explore this um, already, but I wanna kind of make the geometry very explicit. So Z plus W, because Z is three plus I, and W is one plus two I, just crunching the numbers. <clears throat> excuse me, collecting like terms for the real part and then the imaginary part, we're gonna get four plus three i. So we can go ahead and we can plot that. Where's that going to belong? Well, I, I see it about there. That's z plus w. And so just to sort of confirm what we were looking at before, if we think of z and w as kind of like um, a set of instructions for where you need to go. Go, you know, for z, go three to the right and one up. Um, you end up at this spot over here, right? Uh, in fact, I might even put both of those instructions separately for you. So here comes the three to the right, and here's uh, the one upwards. And then we have a, uh, a similar kind of set of instructions, always a real part and imaginary part for W. So you go one unit to the right, and then two units upward for W. So you can see, let's move this letter Z out of the way, over there we'll do. If I do Z, and then I do W, there's that operation there which represents W. You can see that's why we get to Z plus W um, up there in the top right hand corner. Okay, now this is gonna start to get busy but I think we'll be able to fit it in there. Let's do Z take away W as well. So Z take away W, where's that going to land us? Well, uh, it's the same operation that we saw before, the same order anyway, but I'm subtracting instead of adding. So if I change that, there we go. Collect our real and imaginary parts again. So three take away one gives us two. And then I take away two I gives me minus I. So where is that going to go? Uh, two minus I is gonna be here. So this will be Z take away W. Now, how do we fit this together with our understanding? Well, if you think about what, what W asks you to do, it is go to the right one and then go upward two. So this is doing the opposite of that. What we're adding is negative W. So if you want to think about it this way, um, you're kind of going uh, one unit to the left and then two units down. That's the actual operation that we're doing. So you can see that's what lands you. Uh, I, can, I can do it here. Uh, one unit to the left and then two units down. You can see you're sort of going in this bit of spiral action here, right? Um, maybe if you want to think about this in terms of triangles, it's going to become you know, a little easier to conceptualize because there just won't be many, as many lines flying around. So if I think about what's happening uh, in these terms, I've got uh, W coming up that way. I've got Z going this way. So when you do Z and then W consecutively, that's what gets you to Z plus W. When I think about Z minus W, you're going in this opposite direction. After you do Z, you do negative W, and that's what lands you over here. 
Now to finish, we noticed that uh, you can do Z plus W or you can do W plus Z. If you, if you start from doing the W first and then you uh, follow that with plus Z, you end up at the same point. And that's because addition is commutative. But subtraction is not. So if we go ahead and change the order here, if we say W take away Z, what we're gonna do is we're literally gonna switch these guys around. So I might do it like so. I might as well just write that minus sign. You can see, of course, um, as we're used to, you're going to get a different result. Maybe you're anticipating there's a faster way to do this than just to actually do the number crunching. I'm gonna get negative two from one take away three, and then I'm going to get plus i from two i plus, uh, sorry, two i minus i. So you can see this result here, w take away z, of course we shouldn't be that surprised. It is the exact opposite. It's the negative version of the subtraction that we carried out before. So where is that going to land us? Uh, let's use another color over here. I'm gonna say there's minus two plus i. So there is w take away z. And you can see why we end up in a different place. If you're doing w take away z, you start with this w and then the second operation is negative z, right? So therefore, or you're adding negative z, I should say. So that's why you end up going in this direction. So when you do the subtraction in different orders, here was the first one, z take away w, and then here, let's choose a color like blue, I haven't used that. Here's w take away z. So that's why, of course, you end up at different places. But as we've noticed, uh, they are on opposite sides of the origin, so you can see there is that uh, visual connection as well. So you can see, I'm um, starting to understand all of these shapes, seeing the parallelograms, uh, the triangles that are inherent to doing complex arithmetic will really help you to gain a sense of what is all this number crunching meaning. Uh, and it's the same deal with multiplication, division as well. And when we get there, spoilers, um, things like say square roots to think visually about what that means um, will be really interesting and will help you gain insight.